In this video, I want to talk to you about another one of my favorite innovations. A couple of weeks ago, we did a video on drones, uh, which have amazing possibilities. They can do so many things. And we said that innovation to us is something that opens up opportunities and gets people to do things they couldn't do before. Well, here's another one of my favorite innovations, and it's not techy at all. Post-its. Hello, you beautiful innovators, makers, tinkerers, engineers, mechanics, and other people that push the boundaries to come up with new creative stuff. Welcome back here to our channel. My name is Yuri from The Magic Sauce. Post-its are some of my favorite tools and I use them all the time. We use them in workshops, we use them in meetings, I use them at home. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you several creative ways of using post-its, which you probably hadn't thought of before. A couple of weeks ago, I was at an event and I met somebody, he asked me what I did. I said, I run The Magic Sauce, which is a small agency that you know, works with clients on creative and innovative projects. And he looked at me and he said, ah, you're one of those posted guys. Now, I could hear a slight tone of condescension in his voice, so I assumed it wasn't meant to be a compliment. And we sometimes get that. We associate creative people with people who just use post-its and write down stuff. But at the end of the day, a post-it is a tool, and I don't think you should ever blame a tool. Blaming post-its for poor facilitation or for a poor meeting is like blaming blaming a hammer for poor carpentry. Imagine somebody saying to a carpenter, ah, you must be one of those hammer people. Hammer time! Or blaming a car for a bad taxi driver. See, there is nothing wrong with most tools. It's all about how we use them. In our innovation and creative work, we have a range of tools from uh, online tools to offline tools, to graphs we use in the room, to metrics that we use, to physical things like post-its and like markers and like blue tack, which we use to facilitate conversations around tricky topics. So I would hate for post-its to be blamed for a poor experience. For those of you who don't know, post-its are also a great example of what I like to call accidental innovation. See, in the late 60s, a chemist at 3M wanted to come up with a super strong glue, and it turned out to be a super weak glue. It stuck, but it could also be repositioned, so it didn't quite measure up to the super strong adhesive that they were trying to create. So they had a solution, but they didn't have a problem. Now, for years, they didn't really know what to do with it until a friend said, hang on, I sing choir songs from my hymn book at church, but the, the bookmarks in my hymn book keep falling out. He tried to put on some of the, the weaker glue that they had, and the bookmarks would stick in, and voila, the start of the post-it was born. Now, the first post-its that came out had this color, which most of you will know, and there was a very simple reason for that. The lab next to the post-it lab only had leftover canary yellow paper, and that's why the first posters that came out came out in these colors. Now, since then, they've come out with a whole bunch of different ones here. These are the super sticky ones and, and cool, funky colors. They've got bigger size ones. They're all different sizes out there now. But it started out as something that was a bit of a botch experiment. In 1997, the pattern to the post-it ran out and all kinds of other players came into the market with their version of the sticky note. And I can tell you, I have tried most of them, and most of them are shit. In a previous video, I mentioned I once had an entire wall filled with amazing research, which we had clustered, worked on for days, and overnight they all fell off the walls. So, go for 3M, those are the best ones. Oh, and by the way, this is not a sponsored video, I'm just a fan. There are, of course, a ton of ways in which you can use post-its. To give you an example, when we do project management for an innovation project, we put a big line of tape on the wall and we can quickly with different colors and different sizes of post-its find out what are the milestones who's going to do what what are the deliverables where do we need to look at then once we have them up because they're post-its we can reposition them throughout the conversation that we have in the room but it doesn't have to stop there here are five more ways in which you can use post-its for everyday use you can leave cute little messages for your loved ones you can remove lint from clothing you can cover the camera lens on your computer, you know, just to make sure nobody's watching along. They can be used as cheap coasters for your next party, or they can be used as markers along the way for your next treasure hunt. So in short, post-its are a beautiful analog innovation which kind of came to the world by surprise and have been used all over the world ever since. Now there's one little caveat. I sometimes get asked, hang on, you're an innovation. Why do you use such simple analog tools for your work? There must be better digital and technical tools which you can use. 
Of course there are. I use a range of very clever tools for email management, for data management, for sales, for things like that. But of course, even the best tools are useless if you don't know how to use them. Or as a client of mine said last year, I had forgotten the power of having a conversation with somebody and just capturing stuff on pieces of paper because we're so used to looking at our screens, so used to our apps, our programs, that sometimes we forget that simple things can work just as well. And that's why in our videos, we often use tools like sticky tape, a paper plane, post-its, a ball, a cat, to signal to you that in a very complex world, often very simple tools can already get you quite far. So, don't blame the tool. And the next time somebody looks at you and says, you're one of those posted guys, you can poke them in the eye. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you here again next time for more creative stuff. And, you know, please. Oh, and by the way, I just learned yesterday that I've been tearing off post-its the wrong way for the last 70 years. So the way to do it, to do it properly, is to tear them off sideways, less curl and they'll... See? Never too old to learn!